Hey everybody, I'm so glad that you guys are here to watch us today. So I promise you to tell you a little bit more about my experience in New Orleans. Um, you know, I it was my birthday and I went there in January and I thought, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna eat everything. And fair enough, I got there and there was gluten and pretty much in every meal. There was a lot of eggs, a lot of onions, a lot of garlic, and all these foods have always been a big trigger for me. And yes, I have been doing this for the past 12 years and my gut has significantly improved, but there was always a missing piece. And um, to my, you know, just kind of absolute amazement, I did not have any reactions. You're talking about having no bloating, no pimples, no headaches, no lethargic drops, sleeping really well. I mean, you just name it, no, you know, no reactions whatsoever to food. And that was an absolute amazement. And my first reaction was like, well, did I really heal my gut? But the truth is that two months ago, I was still bloated from eating garlic and onions, big set off. And so really the only thing that I had changed was that I incorporated um, a new product to my regimen uh, based on a story of uh, my colleague who introduced me to Megas probiotics and he told us a story about how his mother-in-law could not touch animals because of severe allergies for years and after being for six weeks on this product he has she's managed to play with the animals and uh, that has completely changed her life her level of allergies has gone away so I was fascinated by that and you know and you know me I do not promote almost any products and I've always been on a mission of getting you guys our supplements and especially those ones that we can easily replace with food um, and I'm not saying I don't believe in supplements but I do believe that there is sometimes we are over supplement a lot of times and you can ask a lot of different providers about supplements but you can come to me for food right but this is a little different and I feel like this is the one thing that's been missing a missing piece in a lot of people's lives and with that I want to introduce you to Kieran who is the founder, one of the founders of Mega Probiotics. Um, and we're gonna have a chat today, just a total a, a overview and a brief conversation just about what is the product about and why does it make a, such a huge difference in so many women's life. Hey, welcome, Kieran. Hi, welcome, so great to join you. Thank you so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what brought you to Mega Probiotics. Yeah, so my, uh, my academic uh, training is in microbiology, so I worked as a microbiologist in industry as well for um, almost a decade, working a lot with food companies, uh, doing a lot of research. My entry into the nutritional space was actually in the form of clinical research, so I um, owned a clinical research organization where we actually ran clinical trials on nutritional products for different companies. And um, through that, I discovered a few nutrients that I thought are extremely powerful, extremely important, and, and worked on actually developing those myself with uh, other doctors that I partnered with. And um, we basically uh, looked at the probiotic market for the last 10 years and really studied the probi probiotic market to, to understand what are people actually doing with probiotic therapies, how are people designing products, why are they putting the types of strains that they put into it? What are those strains actually doing in the body? And so yeah. looking at it from a microbiologist standpoint, the studies of bacteria, um, we, we ended up uh, finding our way to discovering these new um, sets of strains that are absolutely critical uh, to the function of the gut and are totally missing from our diet, from our supplement regime, um, but has been with us for millions of years if you look at the course of human evolution. So, so yeah. we simply wanted mm. to put it back into our diet. That's how we came to Megaspore Biotic. And, and one thing I just want to also say here is that this is not an isolated just case of me and my assistant, my team, because I, I put my team, I send the team, the products as well as part of you know the benefit of working here. And, and everybody's been having similar results to me, like my assistant, can you now eat eggs but this is again not isolated case of a few I do belong to a number of different uh, Facebook groups that are very health focused and on or problem specific focus so for example one group that's got a histamine intolerance problem and I mean these women are down to five foods right because if they do anything else than the five foods they're gonna just break out and have their lives is just upside down and 
you know, and, and, and I belong to also to another one for autoimmunity and for gut healing. And I can tell you one thing that this is, has been a story that I've been reading over and over again. People going, what are the things that helped you? And a lot of people go, what is the supplement that helped you, right? And people always say, I got off these foods, those big allergenic foods, the trigger foods. And then the first supplement they list is mega probiotic. And I've been, so, you know, I've been seeing this over and over again. And I thought at first I was like, well, this is this another miracle product. But then when I met Michael, who introduced us, and I heard the story from him and Michael said, I am not a supplement guy. I do not want to push supplements. And I was like, oh my God, this is my guy. So, so this is fascinating what you're saying. And can I ask you, why is it that we do not have this strain of probiotics in us anymore? What happened to them? And that's, that's a, actually a great question and actually falls right into your philosophy of, you know, reducing the amount of supplements and actually getting whole foods, all our nutrition through foods, like our ancestors did. You know, we imagine humans have been evolving for several million years, and for the most uh, part of evolution, we didn't have access to supplements. So we got all our nutrition from food. These bacteria are very unique strains of bacteria that are actually gut inhabitants. So that means they're naturally existing within the human gut or belong within the human gut, but they enter the human gut through the outside environment. Mm. So they are found in natural, pristine environments. If you go into the Sahara Desert and you look in the sand, you'll find a high concentration of these particular types of bacteria. If you look at natural soil and sides of mountains and fields and, and rivers and streams, yeah. this is where you find these types of bacteria. Right. But these types of bacteria are not your typical soil-based organisms because they're not bacteria that actually live within the soil. When they are in the outside environment, they actually go into a form called an endospore. So they are in this endospore, which is a hibernation form of the bacteria. It makes them virtually impervious to outside stresses, things like UV radiation, dryness, heat, um, and, and any other things that typically kill most bacteria. And, and they can stay in this hibernated form for millions of years, literally. And then when you consume them, when they get into the upper GI, they come out of this hibernated form within about mm. eight minutes, and then they live within the gut and do some fascinating things, which we'll talk about. So our ancestors for millions of years ate off the land. Our ancestors were hunters, gatherers, foragers, they dug around for food and roots and tubers, they picked things off trees and ate, so they didn't sterilize their food system, they didn't clean everything, they didn't wash everything, they got a big dose of these particular types of bacteria with everything they ate. Right. So it became a very normal part of their nutrition. And if you go and look at the hunter-gatherer tribes, like the uh, Hadza tribe in Tanzania, for example, that has been studied very well, they still get a huge amount of these types of bacteria within their diet, and they don't have any digestive issues. So let and me ask you, is what's the difference between a spore probiotic and uh, soil-based bacteria? Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a very important question because uh, a lot of people confuse them often. Soil-based organisms are organisms that actually live in the soil. Yeah. They ferment in the soil. They uh, break down uh, plant matter, bacterial matter. Uh, animal matter, they actually fix nitrogen in the soil, and their home is the soil. Now, an or organism that lives in the soil cannot live in the gut because the soil and the gut are two very different mm. types of environment, primarily the types of gases. Obviously, mm. in the soil, we are looking at an aerobic environment which is full of oxygen. Your gut is an yeah. anaerobic environment. Your gut has no oxygen in it. Yeah. And in fact, most of the bacteria that live within your gut oxygen is toxic to them. Right. So soil-based organisms are organisms that are just taken out of the dirt, uh, put together in a formulation, and, and taken as a supplement. Now, there can be some immune benefits to being exposed to these types of bacteria. Okay. Um, but the other thing is they don't really do much else within the gut. These are spores that actually use the environment as a vector to get into the host. Right. Um, and so they are human commensal organisms. They belong in our gut uh, as their home, but they use the environment as a way to transfer from host to host. Interesting. So let's talk about the benefits, right? And let me just tell you what I, I've encountered. So I told, I, I said that in my story. So definitely diminishment of diminishing reactions to foods for sure. In fact, completely going away in my case. And by the way, just a little caveat here. I do not plan to going back to be eating gluten and uh you know and dairy and excessive in fact i'm not gonna go back to gluten at all right. uh, but i thought it was just 
very empowering to have the sense of freedom from, you know, from just when you want it, you have it without suffering. Um, definitely my, my assistant's all about eggs. Um, so I can see there's a food sensitivity that are diminishing. Um, I, I see people posting in forums saying their, their general um, depression and anxiety. So again, the connection between the gut and the brain. So a lot of mental functions that have been improving. What else can you tell us about? What have you guys been documenting and seeing with, with your clients? Uh, so in, in, in large cases, uh, like the story you told about your clients, um, your, sorry, your colleague's mother-in-law, um, allergies. We have hundreds and hundreds of uh, documented cases within our clinics and many of the doctors. So this, there's about um, 2,500 doctors in the U.S. that currently use the product. So we've got literally tens of thousands of patients on the product, and we get a lot of feedback, a lot of empirical data from mm -hmm. that. Um, one of the biggest things that we see are people's um, general allergies, so seasonal allergies mm. being um, really, really diminished or gone total, or people like um, uh, like your colleague's mother-in-law, uh, pet allergies or allergies and sensitivities to food. Um, and we work with a lot of people with Hashimoto's um, and thyroid issues as well, hormone imbalances, um, chronic UTIs or chronic mm. BV, so your genital health has been impacted quite a bit. Eczema, psoriasis, we have dozens and dozens of cases of those. Uh, people with a significant amount of eczema, psoriasis being diminished over time. And then uh, to me, the biggest thing is the food sensitivities, you know, the one that, that yeah. you mentioned, because humans as a species, we are designed to be omnivores, right? And if we yeah. weren't omnivores, we wouldn't have really evolved very well um, as a species because we foraged, we ate all kinds of things. So when you've gotten to a point in your life where you're down to five, six, seven foods that you can tolerate, you really are um, getting away from the nature of how our gut is Absolutely. supposed to be. You know, and, and of course, not to mention the incredible quality of life impact that it makes. So uh, for us, one of our focuses was how do we restore the gut back to be able to digest and tolerate all those different types of foods that we're supposed to be able to do it. Right. Um, you know, depression, anxiety is another big one you mentioned, and um, and we have a great group of docs in Florida that actually work with a lot of kids with spectral disorders and, and ADHD, uh, wow. and we're seeing really great results with those kids as well. What so, about what about autism, kids with autism? Yeah, autism, spectral disorders, we're okay. seeing great okay. results. Uh, as you know, autism and digestive health issues yep. go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting to note that the microbiome is established right around two and a half to three years of life. So about 838 days after you're born, you, or your adult microbiome is established. Yeah. That's also coincidentally about the time when you start to see symptoms of autism. Yeah. You don't see autism right symptoms away. in one-year-olds, two-year-olds. You start to see between the age of two and a half and three yeah. as the adult microbiome uh, starts to uh, develop. So we see great results with kids in, with spectral disorders. Awesome. You know, um, so here is the deal. We're going to do another educational webinar, right, where I want to talk about a lot of other fascinating things, including what's the difference between spore biotics, lactobacillus, and bifidobacterium, which is the, what typical probiotics have. Why is it that typical probiotics that we buy, even the top-notch quality, isn't really working for a lot of people? That includes me. You know, honestly, I have be using it because it's always been part of a functional medicine protocol. Sure. I have not had a client who came back to me saying, hey, Magdalena, ever since I started this probiotic, you know, my life has changed. No, it's always been a small incremental improvement. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing another webinar with proper slides, so real great demonstrations of case studies and how this works with the differences. You know, one thing before we sign off, I want to just ask you for recommendations of usage because there's gonna, always going to be a lot of questions. How do we use it? And yeah. why is it that some, for some people it works like, like the way it did for me, right, and, and my folks, and why is it that for others it's like, you know, it's just meh, you know, just no, no, not much of a difference. Could we just yeah. cover that? Sure, yeah, and so at the end of the day, most of the, most of the issues people are facing with, with their gut is due to dysbiosis. Yeah. Dysbiosis, of course, is just a general term for an imbalance of good and bad bacteria or an overgrowth of certain types of species like candida, for example, or viral species. So one of the main functions of what this probiotic does that is very unique is it's, it's, a, it's the police of your gut. Mm. So we're not attempting to reseed your gut with good bacteria. What we're doing is sending in the police. They 
the ability to actually read the microbial environment. That's a process called quorum sensing. And then they can actually target harmful or overgrown organisms by producing up to 25 different antibiotics in that microenvironment. So they kill off bad bacteria, they kill off fungus, and then they actually produce compounds to regrow the good natural bacteria that you got from mom uh, since the day you were born. Right. And so they shift the balance of good and bad bacteria. That's why you see such profound changes in people, because mm -hmm. it's one of the only probiotics that can actually shift the balance of good and bad bacteria. Right. Now, it depends on how bad your balance was, it could take a significant amount of time. In your case, you're somebody that's been working on your gut for 12 years and probably do a lot of therapies. Yeah. You needed that, uh, that just last minute edge, yeah. you know, and which the spores are able to go and do within a day in many cases. Yeah. Uh, it can eliminate certain types of bacteria within a day, regrow another set of bacteria within a day, and you could feel a profound change. For people that have had chronic issues for a very long time, but have not taken the other steps to reduce their candida, for example, or reduce their chronic viral infections, it can take much longer. Okay. And those kind of patients, we usually do supportive therapies as well to help them. Gotcha. Um, and I hear that SIBO also can benefit, people with SIBO can also benefit from, from your product. Is that correct? It, it is. And in fact, it's a prescription. These strains are a prescription treatment for SIBO in Europe. Oh, wow. Um, and, and these strains, that's actually where we got them from. Uh, we, we discovered these strains because we were looking at what the pharmaceutical use of probiotics are. These oh. particular strains have been prescription drugs since 1958 in wow. Europe uh, mm -hmm. and in Asia as well. So they've been on the pharmaceutical market for 60 years wow. and not available here in the U.S. at all through the supplement market. So yeah. that's where we got them. Because SIBO is an overgrowth of uh, a fermenting bacteria in the small bowel, these guys can get in the small bowel, identify that overgrowth, and actually bring down those numbers and kill off that overgrowth of bacteria. That's so fascinating. SIBO is a great uh, one as well. That's really great to hear. So that was my last question. How do we, um, how do we take it? Um, so that's a great question. The, the full dose of it is two caps a day taken at the same time with or right after a meal. Now, a lot of people who have um, an overgrowth of bad bacteria within their gut, if they start with two caps a day, which is the full dose, they can have something what we call Herxheimer reactions or detox yeah. reactions. When some of these bad bacteria or fungus die off, what they do is they release the toxins. And, when, and if you have a leaky gut, those toxins can make you feel, kind of give you flu-like symptoms, sometimes give you flushing, redness of the skin, mm -hmm. make you tired. Um, so to avoid the detox reaction, because these guys are going to go in there and kill a lot of bad organisms, we taper people up. Right. So we, we start everybody at one capsule every other day with the meal or right after a meal. Um, do that for a week. If you feel good on that and, that, and, and you don't have the detox reactions, then you go to one capsule every day for another week if you're good on that. Then you can go to the two a day, and remember, two a day are taken at the same time. If you took 100 people and started them on two caps a day, 85% of them would do totally fine. It's that 15% mm. that have really bad overgrowths that will have those detox reactions, right. but it's hard to tell yeah. who they are. Yeah. And because of that, we, we titrate everybody up. Yeah, okay. Then that's And that's one of the reasons why you are selling only three practitioners, exactly. because it's to manage the condition. So... So my team is now trained on this, and uh, we're going to be doing even more training with you guys. Um, so I'm going to put the website address down below this video where you can get it on through my website. And, you know, and I'm just, I am so much in awe. I am so feeling so grateful, really am, um, that this is not something gimmicky. It's like, it's like the missing piece for, yeah. I think, in a lot of people's lives. And so I just can't, I can't just tell you how excited I am in, in, finding, in finding you guys through, through Michael. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, let's prep up for our next uh, seminar so that we do something a little bit bigger and more for people who want to go a little bit deeper into the subject. And also, I, I think just the whole comparison of traditional probiotics, the way we know them, and just explaining why it works, what it doesn't work, what works, what doesn't work. I, I mean, I think that alone is going to be a, a huge benefit for the community. So thank you so much for this and, yeah. um, and you know, all the best to everybody's healing. So be in yeah. touch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.